Dice Man Enterprises exclusively presents a talk show that will get to the bottom of things once and for all. And now here's your host for Let's Get to the Bottom of That, Three Weirdos on a Mic. What's up? Welcome back to another episode of Let's Get to the Bottom of That. All my conspiracy nuts, this is Byron Dice. You're listening to Let's Get to the Bottom of That podcast, probably the best show on the internet, where each week I'm joined by a bunch of weirdos, and we cover a topic that's been left out in the public square, unattended, covered with questions from the official story. So do me a favor, my critical free thinkers. Get your tinfoil hats back on, sit back and relax, and let's get to the bottom of Area 51. Welcome into the program, a bunch of weirdos. Of course, Joey's back, Yo. my wife's back, and we have in-house, in-studio, another. I guess it's the, it's the show of the wives. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We have Kayla. Hello. She is in-studio. Uh, this is her debut on the show. Yes, I Joey was so like, special. you know what? Um, I don't have anything to do today, and she so needs to just come and sit and hang out. Just have Kayla. Because they would be talking <laughs> anyway about the stuff at home. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's all they, that's all right. they do. Right. You'd be around sitting around the stuff. table, eating tacos, and talking about Area 51. Talking about aliens, dude. This is what we do late at night, like <sighs> midnight. Yeah. Talk well, there... Exactly. There hasn't been any new sightings yet, as far as I know. You know, like the Miami thing running yeah. around. Yeah. Um, have you guys seen any lately? Aliens? Because you guys are out in the country. Not any new... <laughs> you guys... <laughs> Yeah, we're down in Yeehaw you Town. Got, yeah, yeah right. You hadn't looked at the sky and went, hey, look at that Tic Tac thing. I saw, I saw a floating orb Okay, um, the other day. When? Um, it was crazy, dude. <laughs> was it ever? I closed my eyes and all was of a sudden Was this in the was, basement? Yeah. Oh, it was the dust. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't gotcha. really. Dang yeah. it. <laughs> Debunked. It was from looking at a screen too long. Yeah. The little white lights. It was the out. blood rushing to my head. Well, we thought this uh, episode was appropriate. We just dropped uh, Roswell. And uh, that's kicking up pretty good. Matter of fact, uh, we're not going to get into comments on this show. By the way, we're going to do uh, Down the Rabbit Hole, which is probably everybody's favorite out there. Yeah. It's it's one of the high, it's it's the top of the list. <laughs> top 10. It's, yeah, Five it's, star it's up show. there. It's, it's higher than the Nephilim. I don't know why, but of course I'm kidding and being sarcastic. But I will tell you this, we're going to try to save all the comments for Down the Rabbit Hole episodes. So the hard see the hardcore fans listen. Yeah. To the rabbit hole. The other guys, you know what? You're not talking about Nephilim. You're not talking about pyramids. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm checking Who out. Who cares, dude? I'm checking out. But the hardcore guys are like, you know what? I like their personalities. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to listen to your personalities because, for Right. That's that's half. what it is. It's per you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I feel like some rabbit whole episodes have been amazing for me i like listening to joey's jokes and stuff and then other ones i'm just like uh, that's what people are here for yeah <laughs> the, the, oh yeah joey's jokes the joey's jokes <laughs> well, <laughs> well obviously they're, they're they're my favorite wow. um, I'm, I'm biased so wow. having said that uh <laughs> soon not sure when it's going to drop uh but soon maybe in a couple of weeks down the rabbit hole so if you know little guapo i know you're out there listening you have put some comments out uh, we will get you another shout out. Lily Guap. Um, because I think Little Guapo is one of the ones that said, I've been waiting for, um, well, actually Roswell. He said, this is, <laughs> why is it taking so long? Why you're just now getting to this? Yeah. And I was like, yeah, that's true. That should have probably been the first show. That's all right. It's, it's down. It's, it's one of the ones in the vein. The Roswell. Yeah. Yeah. Roswell. Oh, because it's aliens. It's a top conspiracy theory. Yeah, it's top. Yeah. We've just put it off because probably we didn't know much well, about you, it. Well, you can't just you can't just put all your cards out on the table. You can't. I mean, sometimes mm -hmm. you got to talk about big tech mm -hmm. before Roswell, and well, that was a mistake. And sometimes you don't need to. <laughs> and that was a no one cares. <laughs> <laughs> no one cares. Big, uh, big well, tech. Wow. Oh wow. Let's uh, let's dive into this one. Uh, Area fifty one. This is pro everybody knows. If anybody is a listener of this show, this is one of the ones that are up there. Roswell, yeah. Area 51. I feel like, personally, that these two go hand in hand because I feel like, what well, we just covered on the Roswell episode last week, mm -hmm. this is where they dragged everybody yeah. to Area 51. So okay. whatever, the crash, the alien, the body, this is where they ended up. Yeah, it's all connected. Area 51. So Allegedly. Well, let's do it. No, there's, <laughs> there's proof. 
Allegedly. I'll show you at the end of this. Joey. Now, remember, Joey's remember the mortician, the dude. Come on, the mortician. We played his interview. Oh, you mean the guy that was telling the other dude Yeah, the to guy that puts up. to sleep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but he still was there, and he said he, he went out with his girlfriend. They ate some lunch. Not sure what they ate. It wasn't his girlfriend. That was a nurse. Um, I think he was after. I think he no. was looking for, for love in all the wrong places. But having said that, Mortician, he he was uh, he said, hey, there, there, where's the caskets? And yeah. then I'm going to read some. There's some other scientists at the the, the end of the show. I'm going to cover. Somebody uncovered some stuff that worked in Area 51. Yeah. On his deathbed said, hey, this is this is what happened. I got pictures and I got everything. Does he? Yeah. Let's go. What was he saying, though? Well, you're, <laughs> I'll tell you at the end. Well, I think we're going to have some conflicting stories here. Well, good. That's what this show's about, conflict. You know, we got to get to the bottom of this. Um, uh, well, I'll just tell you this. In case you're listening and you don't know what Area 51 is, it's a highly secretive and classified U.S. military facility located within the Nevada Test and Training Range. Its history dates back to the 1950s during the Cold War. That's where it's at. So it's basically an Air Force base. That uh, normal people just can't walk up and get on because it's, they got it fenced off. They got guards. Yeah. And um, apparently it had its origins during the Cold War, which I've always been confused about what the Cold War is. Well, I'm glad you're asking. Why is it cold? Why was the war cold? Yeah. Why is it a hot, why not, what's the hot, is there a hot <laughs> war? I never say, I mean, they never use that word. It was a secret war, basically. No, is that, that's what it is. Yeah, secret. that's what it was. So the war, that's what my, majority of my notes are, are is um, Area 51 was our um, secret base where we were um, trying to basically out design and out maneuver the Russians. Okay. Okay. So what's well, always about the Russians? And, well, I mean, originally it was about the Germans, right? So World War II, we know that that transpired. They had all the Nazi die Glock and all this crazy, you know, wonder waff yeah. technology. And then Project Paperclip, <clears throat> then the war ended. The, you know, we got Werner von Braun and yep, all the those, rocket uh, guy, all those uh, scientists, the German Nazis, we brought them over to America to be a part of our, our team. To create and design. See, Kayla, that's basically what Paperclip is. Yeah, okay. that's That project Paper. was taking all those scientists that worked for <laughs> that guy that with people. a mustache, and they said, hey, you know what? You're pretty smart. Yeah. All these like people that were doing human testing, <laughs> strapping Jews to bombs, ramming them into mountains, like terrible, yeah, terrible, terrible stuff. Human we beings. were like, ooh. Oh, yeah. We're like, we want you your got, brain. You got a nice brain, so we'll, we'll come yeah. yeah. over here. Exactly. So they, they, they just... Uh, nullified all of their war crimes said hey come on over so but what a lot of people don't know is the russians also had their own i don't know what it was off the called off the top of my head but they also had their own project paperclip they brought a lot of scientists from the german nazis <clears throat> to russia i think them. it was project safety pin uh, well i was going to say that nice. or project um <laughs> Um, this point. Yeah, something like that. Is that really what it was called? No, no. it should be, though. Oh, I mean, if you're thinking about it, if you're tracking with that same... Project Paperweight? That. What about Project Binder? <laughs> that could be it, too. Yeah. You never know. But... But, of course, it was in Russian, so it sounded <laughs> mean and angry when you said it. That's German. Well, I mean, Russian... I mean, that sounds angry. You're I just really said Project Paperclip. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> But that's that's what the Cold War was. So it's a bit, uh, essentially it was a war uh, between two, you know, secret societies creating things to figure out how to spy on each other. So it's a lot of uh, has to do a lot of with you know nuclear warheads after we drop bombs mm -hmm. on Hiroshima. Um, the Soviets designed their own nuclear war nuclear warhead, um, and then it was just a long drawn out like. And then the arms race began. Well, it's an arms race yeah. of can, they could. <laughs> They were setting themselves up because we know about the V2 rocket that the Germans created. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, they essentially, the Soviets were setting themselves up to be able to get into range to drop a warhead on the United States. Everyone was freaking out. That's what the Cuban Missile the Cuban, Crisis yeah. was about. Like, hey, they're in range now. Um, so, and then they put Sputnik, the um, the um, satellite Sputnik, yeah. in the air. <clears throat> I mean, it was it was a lot. So... My notes, it has to do with a lot of those early years of the secret base. 
um, as far as the U.S. was trying to design <coughs> ways to be able to spy and figure out what the Russians were doing. And that was the Cold War. And okay, at the same gotcha. point in time, the Russians were trying to design... They were doing the same thing. ...missiles. They were trying to design <coughs> missiles to be able to hit hit us. So, um, but anyway, that's ru- and, in a nutshell. Yeah. Okay, what, I got what you. the Cold War. War was. And then so, and you always talk about, I don't know if it was Reagan or whoever. At some point, somebody said, hey, we ended the Cold War. Reagan, yeah. Is that, was it Reagan? Is that, yeah. Is that true, or is it is it is that just a facade, like and it's really going down. on right now? <clears throat> well, so, say that, so they so that that's a <laughs> that's a pivotal point in history when the Berlin Wall came down. Is that when they're saying, "Hey, the Cold War's ended"? Yeah, I don't think so. I think so. Well, I think that's what people say. Right, I don't think it ended say. at all. Right. You think it's still going on? Well, sure. I mean, well, there's spies and secrets and well, handshakes that, and putting exons on the windows. That is when um, this. Uh, like I said, the early, early years, like World War II and all those things, that's the war kind of changed as far as like you win. It went from you win by your, your weapons to you win by your knowledge, <clears throat> you know? So it's like the CIA, CIA was born about that point in time. It's like no, the, it, 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 on that. it became, it, it became about espionage and trying to figure out what you're <clears throat> where they have and where they're going and why they're doing it. That's how the CIA was started. Correct. Was yeah. Through. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, about this time. It was about the the same the birth of Area 51 was about the time the CIA started. Okay. So, interesting stuff. So, you think that basically Area 51 is hey, we're saying it's aliens, but it's really technology and Well, <laughs> when you think about it, you know, if if this Wonderwolf, this uh Nazi die Glock machine, mm-hmm. anti-gravity Glocker. machine if it was real, which when we did that episode, we talked about how they could have done it and how they possibly did do it. So I absolutely think it was a real weapon. Um, then you have all of those scientists come over and about this same point in time, Area what, 51 is born. And then the first 10, 20 years of Area 51, they're designing planes that the people have never even seen before, like floating triangles <clears> in the <throat> sky and... All of this. Right, uh, and they can move in, in very yes. weird ways, yeah. unlike a traditional airplane. Yeah, yeah. so <coughs> I'll just, here, I'll just, you want to hop over to my notes yeah, real quick? sure. Since I'm doing most hey everybody, of the Everybody, we're right going to hop over to Joey's notes, and he's going to read. So, so this is the fan of the ladies here. Let me just set that, that are on, <laughs> in the studio. Let me set the, uh, let me set the tone of the, the country about this time, okay? So. This was, I would say, the birth of, of psychological warfare or psyops. Okay. And this was just an accidental thing that maybe it was an accident or maybe it was self planned. But anyway, there was this thing called the War of the Worlds broadcast. It was a radio oh, ad- yeah. adaptation of H.G. Wells' science fiction novel, The War of the Worlds. It was performed as a Halloween episode on the American radio drama <laughs> anthology series, The Mercury Theater on the Air. Directed and narrated by Orson Welles. The broadcast aired on October 30th, 1938 over the Columbia Broadcasting System. (laughs) Um, The novel story of Martian invasion of Earth was adapted by Howard Koch into a contemporary American setting presented in a series of simulated news bulletins and live report. Live coming to you from D.C. (laughs) Yeah, so basically this format was so realistic... That it created like mass yes. hysteria, pandemonium. Oh, people were selling their homes. They were packing up. They're like, "This is the end of the world. We're all gonna die." Right. So many believe that it was an actual. Uh, thank I mean, you, that's man. what was going was on. It the right vacuum. There. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <Come on. laughs> uh, many believe that it was an actual Martian invasion taking place. So it was confusion, fear. Uh, many countries took note of this. Um, so obviously the CIA, Hitler, uh, the Nazi Germans took note of this. They mentioned it. They changed <clears> their <throat> propaganda. And then Stalin started changing propaganda on the facts of, of what fear, like a, a fake, you know, basically the extraterrestrial thing will do to the public. This, yeah. This mass. Just freak people out. Oh, yeah. So then um, in the book, I have this book that I did most of my research off of. It's called the An Uncens- Uncensored History of America's Top Secret Military Base. It was written by a woman named Annie Jacobson. 
Uh, which was basically like a journalist on the time. Um, she had exclusive access to 19 men who served at the base proudly oh. and secretly for decades and are now aged 75 to 92 and uh, an unprecedented access to 55 additional military and inten- intelligent personnel, scientists, pilots, and engineers who linked to the secret base, 32 of whom lived and worked there for extended periods. Wow. Amy. So these... These are all firsthand accounts of people that <clears throat> live there, okay? And it's interesting. We, we just did Roswell because in this book, it talks about that sp- spaceship that crashed. The yeah. reason why this the whole thing went into a Cold War is because that was actually, whenever they found that crashing, inside of the ship, a lot of the firsthand accounts said that there was Russian writing in there. Mm. It was a Russian ship. And the two creatures that they found were two mutilated kids mm. oh really yes no now is, that makes sense that kind of sets up the uh what the dude said he saw weird like hieroglyphs mm-hmm. and if he didn't speak russian or yeah. no russian maybe it was it was foreign to him yeah it was he russian. did say it, it looked like hieroglyphs yeah so and it also leads some credibility <clears throat> because i just listened to our roswell episode again yesterday and um it talks about how the scientists kept going in there and coming out and puking and they're yeah. just disgusted with the scene. But those children were literally mutated, like mutated, like they smashed their fingers and mutilated. cut their eyes. Mutilated. That's mm-hmm. what I mean. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, you, Rachel. You said mutated? <laughs> mutated. That's mutated. a good one. Yeah, I like mutilated. 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 I mean. Um, yeah. And they're just, and they were literally forced in this thing. And the Russians did that because of the hysteria of that, that broadcast to promote fear into America. And that basically started this arms race back in art and Ros- Roswell. So, so you're saying the whole psyop thing was, Hey, did you hear that thing back in 38 where, uh, Orson Wells did this thing and people freaked out? Well, let's do that again. Yeah. And let's, let's crash a ship. Yep. And let's put like some skin suits on some kids, make them look gray and weird mutilate them so nobody knows what they are yeah and then everybody's going to freak out and think there's aliens exactly and then it started this horror or, or it was alien or, right. <laughs> <laughs> well and you think about it it started this whole thing so like one of the things it talks about in this book is like how does the cia cover information so they they do it by creating a false story you know, case in point, the weather oh, yeah. balloon, the false flag, yeah, the false flag. <clears throat> and then the other thing, what that Roswell did for the CIA is it created this, its own entity of aliens, right? Cause then everyone's freaking out. It's aliens, it's aliens and yeah. aliens. And then the CIA was like, Oh, we don't have to lie about this anymore. Let's just let, let them, it, let it go. Let's just let the story <laughs> go, man. It's aliens. And, and then, then, and then, it, and then we'll put icing <laughs> on the top by going, no, 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 no. What are you doing? And and act like a cover up. Oh yeah, and that makes it more. Think about that alien. Dude. That's gaslighting in its highest form. Oh yeah, the gaslighting. It's your you fault. Know? Yeah, exactly, dude. So, I don't know. That's that's up in the air for me. But as far as what was going on in that land, and and you know, we I keep bringing it back to um, you know the Nephilim and advanced societies and stuff. It's like the technology I believe is there. Yeah, and somewhere on this earth, and you know, there's many stories of how Hitler and his scientists were, were <clears throat> super involved in the occult and all this oh, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that 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 uh, that technology was there, and then it just kind of branched out from there. So, I don't know. What do you guys think? Um, that sounds very plausible. Yeah. To to I mean, and if you think about it, they've been doing this for centuries. The psyop. <clears throat> right. So what better way to put the put the public on its heels mm-hmm. to, to do one of these? And it's been going on forever. And we just make everything secretive. Yeah. And because, people think something's going on behind the scenes. And really, wink, wink, it's not really. Well, I mean, then you think about it, dude. Like, they the society already thought it was aliens that were somehow in bed with aliens. And then all the, they they're creating aircraft. That's... You know, it talks about the like the Lockhead U2 Dragon Lady where they're creating this triangle plane, the stealth technology that they're they're having to fly around Area 51. And these are planes Wayne? that <clears throat> I can't Oh, talk that today. reminds me. I just saw on YouTube, uh, excuse me, my Instagram account. Somebody had, so there's a recent picture. It's, it's the best photograph from a pilot 
mm-hmm. that actually got a a great picture of one of these, and it's a triangle. Yeah, it's flying around. Yeah, and they got a picture of it. it, it look, it's really clear. It's not blurry at all. What year was that? This year. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why the triangle shape. I don't know. That seems to be linked to a lot of stuff. Weird. It seems like it would be very alien. What aerodynamical? The triangle. The wind. Yeah. Well, <laughs> definitely yeah. saucer style. According looks. to yeah, this, it makes sense for like aircrafts to be triangle. Mm-hmm. According to this book, so you guys know, um, you know, echolocation. You know, mm-hmm. with a bat, right? Mm-hmm. So the same, that's the same way or the that, dolphin mm-hmm. or, or the dolphin. So the way that the radio Ooh. waves work, um, or <clears throat> sonar, or was it sonar? What is sonar? The yeah. it's sonar. That's where you ping the body. You can tell how far you are. It works mm-hmm. the same way. So basically it's sending a, a sound and then it hits something and it has to bounce back to it. And that gives you the location of it. Okay. So the shape of the aircraft in this book, it details how instead what they were trying to do in the early days, they're trying to do a couple things. They're trying to absorb that radar sound for stealth technology and or deflect it away. So that, that triangle shape. So you can't look at me. Yeah, exactly. Okay, gotcha. So that was like their early, early, like especially those uh, Lockhead U2s. Uh, one, they wanted to fly. They tried to do an altitude, so they wanted to fly altitudes above 70,000 feet, which is like dang near up into the stratosphere. And then they were <clears> trying to use stealth technology to absorb that that sonar to be able to sneakily fly over and are we talking about all of everything that was happening before they called it area 51 um or are we at now it's called area 51 this i mean that's that's what it was back in the day but they they had uh they had a code name for it i want to think it was like delta or something like that i can't remember Mm -hmm. what the actual people on the ground called it at that time but so yeah, actually, is is yeah. I need to look at my notes. Was that uh, the name? Because no, it's a military facility. The military and the CIA refer to it as Groom Lake and Homie Airport. Groom Lake. Uh-huh. Okay. Mm-hmm. Area fifty one. The location is one hundred and twenty miles northwest of Las Vegas. I think you guys had in your notes is like seventy five, but I yeah, I got kept, seventy miles. I kept finding one hundred and twenty, and it's near Rachel and Pico or Heiko. And it was established in 1955 as part of the Nevada Test and Training Range Complex. And it was also what year? given um, 1955. It was 55. Also, okay. Yeah, and it was also given the name Paradise Ranch <clears throat> by aerospace yeah, company Lockheed to draw employees to the base. Yeah, yeah. So the yeah, and that's kind of the the later years. Um, you know, they started adding all these these um, you know pools and pool tables and all this stuff. It, 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 it went into pretty good detail as far as like the base and location and all, everything and the base. It's an interesting book, dude. What's up with the whole, um, go ahead. No, what were you <clears> going to say? Uh, what's up with the whole out West thing? Like Nevada, New Mexico, oh, everything. Utah too. Like Utah, I think Skinwalker every, Ranch is, is right next to Utah. Yes. In Utah. It's in Utah. I don't know. The uh, desert, yeah. It's a like weird place. <laughs> maybe cause there's nothing out there. Maybe. Yeah. It's barren. Maybe. But, th- well, but think about it. Nevada. Is probably the testing ground for nukes. Mm-hmm. It's where it we was. Dropped. It was. And yeah. then I'm like, hey, is that a good idea? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're going to nuke somewhere, that's I mean, the best place. Well, dude, they nuked the crap out of that area, dude. So when here, I think of nuking somewhere, I think of it being way more smart to do that in like an island. Yes, an island out in the middle of from nowhere. The US. Just roast fish. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We're just like, let's just do it right in the, but of course, right in the middle life. of civilization. I don't know if that's a good idea because that's where Godzilla came from. That's true. Exactly. Making those <laughs> islands. But they can never attack the Godzilla's ocean because the that's island. where the Nephilim come from. Dude. Oh, that's true. That's right. It's, you know, water. it's all about the water. They have they have a uh, sworn treaty with them to not bomb the water. I'm just making that so up. Right. That sounds good, though, but this. it makes sense because Jesus put those the demons and the pigs. I'm and where'd you. they go? Straight in the water. I'm telling you, dude. <laughs> My question the is this. There, there's been how many people that have worked out there yeah. in Area 51? 51. Why hasn't anyone come forward? Oh, I've yeah. got that. Oh, let's go. Oh, you mean to talk about that dude? His yes. deathbed? Oh, psh. well, it's early in the show, but did, um, did you guys know that there's no fencing around Area 51? No, there's no fence. Are you kidding me? It's just marked with orange poles and warning signs. I thought that was super. Wait interesting. a minute. There's no. I fence. thought there were because I saw Mr. Beast went out there. 
No fence. In one of his uh, videos. Well, he the, tried to get on base and they wouldn't let him. I'm like, if there's no fence, why don't you just go around? So let me, could, let me, but this probably being, there's no fence around the actual the border, yeah. border yeah. but yeah. there is fencing around a lot of stuff. area 51. Like when yeah. you get towards like the testing areas, I'm sure there's fencing. Yeah. Like the, like the, I airport. mean, the board, I think <clears> it's like, what was it? 50,000 acres or something it sits on. It's a big plot of land. Big old boy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it would be kind of stupid to go there because, like like you're talking about with nukes, it was a testing site for many years where they were dropping just nuke after nuke after nuke over in that area. And uh, it, in the book, it details plutonium. You know, oh, it, no. um, the plutonium kind of after a nuclear explosion happens, it would litter the, um, litter, litter the land with plutonium. And uh, plutonium has a, a, like a half-life of 24,000 years. So it's still there. Why is it called a half life? I don't know. That's just how because the full thing. life would what? be forty thousand years. Why not just say a full life? It basically Why never it decomposes. Half? It never decomposes. Yeah, let's well, just I think say of that. Plutonium. I think of Superman. It just sounds what? like one of those like out of world like plutonium. <laughs> I think of plankton. What? <laughs> what about graphene? Hey, what about it? They dude? just made that up. Graphene. You know what I'm saying? It's all yeah. in the vaccines now. It's all up in the bloodstream. Gosh. Dude. But I, I mean, it's uh, it's crazy stuff. I mean, if if you go there, I think probably a lot of it's not um, walled off because if people go there and they breathe it into their respiratory <clears throat> tract, they're dead. Oh yeah, look at Chernobyl, dude. Oh, they're done. There, so. you can't go up in there and live. They're like, we don't need fences. They'll die before they make it here, dude. Well, that's that's a good point. Mm-hmm. But there was a guy. What guy? Jerry Freeman. <clears throat> Oh, you know about Jerry Freeman? Yeah. Oh, let's he hear. What about him? Week. He spent a week there. But first, let's talk what about. What was he doing there for a week? Um, so actually well, he was camping no, a long time. he was looking for because he's an archaeologist he was looking for the lost Bigfoot. 49ers there's an inscription that there's supposed to be seven inscriptions and six of them have been found there was one last one in the canyon mm-hmm. that is like a mile from Papoose Lake mm-hmm. which is yeah like that's in Area 51 yeah. not a lake mm-hmm. it's wait a like minute dirt. <laughs> What are you talking about? 49ers. Um, it was an old I mining. I don't that, think it's football related. The area, well, I know, but I, I'm talking about the 49ers that were painting for gold. Yeah, that's them. There were lost 40, 49ers. Who? There was like, I think it was like 17 of them or something. I don't, don't. And this Bob Freeman's looking call, for them? So his name is Jerry Freeman. Jerry Freeman. <laughs> no, he's not looking for Bob. them. Oh. He's looking for this lost inscription. There was a picture that was taken of this lost inscription okay. years ago. And this is like back in the 1800s, 1849. Okay, gotcha. I'm with you. Okay. And so they were, they trekked across. They were like, oh, let's take a shortcut. And it, it took them months and they got lost. And they were like. The four, okay. Yeah. And so he's an archaeologist. And so he wanted to go. He wanted to take the same trek that they took. Mm-hmm. Sure. Lewis and, and Clark. Full experience. And yeah. it, it happened to be through <sighs> Area 51. Okay, and gotcha. So he had been petitioning Screw and that. yeah, he had he had talked to his congressman and was trying to get access to be able to go out there. I don't care about your government secrets. All I care about is yeah. I'm trying 49ers. to find these dudes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, and so no, they, the they, they they got out. The 49ers, they, yeah, they did get out. So they weren't they weren't lost forever. Some of them died, but but something was lost. It, well, the inscription. They, they just he wanted to take the same trek that okay. they took, and so but he wanted to feel he wanted to do that experience, right? <laughs> and, he, and he wanted to take an actual picture of the lost inscription. They're like, hey, look at me. Okay. Well, they wouldn't let him. They were like, nope, 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 you can't. So he was like, by God, you're not going to stop me. Oh, no. Anyway, and so boy. He's dead. He did it. <clears throat> well, he, oh, he is did. dead. He yeah. Is. But he died <clears throat> of what they think is probably cancer related to him drinking out of a hose. Oh, come on. On one of the buildings <laughs> that was there. At Area had, 51? Yeah, he had he, he stayed Brady. a week. So what he contacted the? he contacted um a news station and okay. was like, Look. Dude, got him. He's like, "Look, I'm doing this. I'm letting you guys know because if I don't make it back, I want somebody to know this is what I was doing." Yeah. I'm well, caged of course, up. they could have <clears> contacted area 51 government whatever and been like hey this dude's trying to come in be on the lookout yeah stop but they him. didn't and he had a phone he had a this was back in 1997 okay 
So he had like a Nextel phone. Right. So he had an old phone. And and apparently, he said he took pictures of different stuff. He found an ox shoe because, needless to say, he didn't find the inscription. But he found this thing called an ox shoe. Which What's is an ox shoe? Something they used on the wagon back in the days. Wow. You know, what, so where were you just saying about ox cart? That ox cart. Yeah. Shoe. That's ox what, cart. That's the. Um, that was the name of the original plane. Okay. Yeah. That they, Wait a minute. That they called it ox cart, and then we got an ox shoe. Yeah. Something's going on with that. Was their code here. name for the U two plane, the Spycraft <laughs> ox cart? Yeah. Well, because Project that's what ox they cart. used back in the day to who's, travel. Mm-hmm. So. Right. Who's having these meetings? That. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, it was I got an idea. How about an ox cart? It was he a. Never uh, even got what he wanted to. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, ox shoe. It wasn't no, mine. Right. So, um, so he took pictures along the way. Um, at the end of it, when he didn't find the inscription, he was like, "I, I got to get out of here" because he ran out of water, ran out of stuff. So he had to trek back, and he did make it back. Okay. And he did, you know, tell got people. Pictures. Yeah, he, he got pictures, but he didn't release them because what? he wanted to get clearance, basically, of, hey, I don't I want to make sure I didn't get any pictures of anything that's spy-related, you know. I wouldn't care. Top secret stuff. And so <clears throat> he was going to write a book. I think he wrote, okay. like, a 25-page something. But I searched the Internet. I didn't find pictures. There were a couple of pictures. There was one picture of him with Papoose Lake behind him. Okay. And uh, the top of his hat, you can see, like, there's a, a angled something that looks like where it may be, like, a bay or something. Um, but his hat kind of <clears throat> blocks the full picture. Mm. And so that's one picture that you see him. So he made it close to area S4. I don't know if that's something that you guys are familiar with. Oh, okay, some other code words. Yeah, S4 was apparently where, and he saw a sign. There was a sign for the, what is it, Los Alamos? What is it called? Now, there are signs up now currently that say Area 51, or is that just uh, somebody doing Photoshopping? I don't know. He I don't see. think any of, anyone calls it Area 51 except for except us. for us. Cons- yeah, conspiracy people. <laughs> Everything else has a fancy. Why did we get 51 though? <clears throat> I mean, was it Area 49 somewhere? Yeah, I think there's an Area 50 somewhere. 49. There's 50 know. states, <laughs> so this is the oh, 51st. Oh, good one! Bazinga. Wow! <laughs> wow! Oh, there you go. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. Wow. So anyway, he saw a sign, an L A N L, which is the Los Alamos National Laboratory or something like okay. that. And they're the ones that brought the Manhattan Project. He didn't know what it was until he went yeah. back home and researched <clears throat> it, but he saw a sign for the L A N L. So yeah. he L-A-N-L. saw some stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was definitely walking through some plutonium. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. That's so he, he died of prostate him. cancer. Oh. He got cancer. Oh, no. And, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and they try to blame that on a hose. Well, he said no. Well, that I mean, that's, that's what people said that could have happened. He could have got cancer because he did get sick, you know, afterwards. And hey, that's what we used to wash our planes with. Just from walking through there and breathing it. Walking, yeah, right? he's, he was literally walking through like test fields of where they are launching You're kidding, their equipment. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, he toasted himself, dude. That's I guarantee. You that's that's why, why you no should fencing. always carry one of those rad things. What are those things? Called? Geiger counters. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, he did. Be like, <laughs> I I'm like, well, I'm, should, one of those well I'm not making it out of here. You're like, well, I'm going to die. I might as well take all the pictures I want. <laughs> I might as well get a drink from this hose. He's like, I'm, I've got testicular cancer as we speak. We <laughs> dig a hole and just put my head in it. Oh, Freeman. He, he did find like <clears throat> this, like broke down, busted, all, like warehouses that was he and he like slept in there oh. overnight. Um, the, 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 he what a it, rebel. Like, <laughs> Yeah, like this guy the was boss. like props <laughs> off to Freeman, yo. Right? I mean, just get in there. He's that was his final frontier, man. It was. Yeah. He was out there. He watched. Uh, he slammed through all the Indiana Jones movies. He's like, it's my yeah. time. Yeah, he, yeah, exactly. Let me strap the whip on. <clears throat> I'll the guarantee waist. he had a he had a whip on. Oh, dude, he went in there and just. <laughs> I mean, all these conspiracy <laughs> theories they ha- they got no balls. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah they, mean, we just talk about. So, oh, there's an orb. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a board. We a just board. watched. Indiana Jones the other day. It's great. Was movie. that fun? It was fun. I didn't realize which the one, you one sucked so much. What about the Dial of Dysentery? We're we're working our way up to it. The, uh, we've the, watched 
The Dial of the first, Dementia. The dial of what dementia. was it? The first three. Is this first your first two. time ever watching them? Yes, all together. Oh yeah. My gosh. Well, she is young. I just we oh, went. Yeah. She is a child. Oh, yeah, yeah, I am only like. I feel so 17. bad for you guys though <laughs> in the early eighties. You did feel bad. Your guys' action scenes sucked. So are you bad. talking about Commando? Oh, bro, the action scenes Dude, are so. I've got a buzz song which, which going through somebody's about? head. Which one um, are you talking about? What about Predator? Indiana Jones. The second one. Yeah. The, first the Temple of Doom. One. I thought the first one was good. I liked the first dun, 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 one. Yeah, but like the, the actual second one fighting. was like overly sexualized. Like yeah, the was. 80s, like, you know, weird sounds. <laughs> <laughs> I almost like, did an example. Oh, like, God, that go bad. <laughs> dude, what about little Shorty, though, dude? What was his name? Short Stack? Are you talking about little Chinese guy? Oh, man. Oh, I loved him. He I love that kid. Yeah. Guy. Any movie that little He was a good was actor. In. He's in Loki, right? Amy, all the time is isn't that isn't he a is that movie? him yeah surely not oh, really? i'm pretty sure yeah. i think he is he did return to acting because i i went down a he's rabbit a good hole actor. he is yeah i love you indiana he's you know. so cute temple of doom yeah it's a good movie. anyway back to it man. the lost crusade yeah. dude if it weren't for our cheesy action scenes you wouldn't have what you have today i believe it saying. i, I believe, believe it and, and what about predator what are you talking about you guys skimmed over the whole orson wells thing real quick fast in a hurry was there not something that says, hey, this is just fictional? I mean, or yeah, did why they, come on like it's a real broadcast? Right. Did they not? They, okay. So, did, so they must have did that on purpose. <laughs> they want to scare people. They did say it at the beginning. Okay. But anyone who was tuning in after. Oh, it, no. I mean, this guy was literally like, I, I see the spacecraft. It has crashed in front of me. There's people climbing out. You know, they're uh, about 10 feet tall. They've, They've got, got space suction weapons. fingers. They're like, oh my god, they're killing me! You know, and then they, and then the it, the radio broadcast cut like the guy was killed. Okay, and then everyone just went freaking nuts. Well, I see what you mean, but but if, like, if, if you're just cattle. turning the dial because you got tired of Buddy Holly, yeah, and you and you and somebody screaming about you know somebody's in my front yard, yeah, with a saucer. Yes. So they said it at the beginning and never said it again. They never, never said right. it. So Why how would long you? Was the broadcast? Why would you? That I don't know. Well, because they would do that now. I think they would Except break for, in. Let, let, can I just tell you guys no, something? Tell let me, me just tell you guys something. So back in the day, oh, God. have you guys ever heard of the Blair Witch Project? Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. So Byron bought in hook, line, and sinker, dude. Mm-mm. He was <laughs> like the Blair Witch Project. I thought that was real footage. He <laughs> was, dude, he bought in not to the point to where when we went to the movie theater to watch the movie, I mean, it's like filmed in St. Augustine, okay? Yeah. Well, you didn't know that till the end. So. Right, but still, <clears throat> Byron was like, I don't understand why these people are laughing, man. Well, these they were laughing. People lost their lives. <laughs> <laughs> lost it's their not life. a comedy. What are y'all laughing at in here? These people are dead. <laughs> Byron was like, this is the worst moment of my life. I kept telling him, I was uh, like, dude, this is not real. He, I was like, sure, it is real. Look, that looks like a handheld camera. <laughs> oh, my God. That's a video, homemade movie. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> Oh God. I'm sorry. I, 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 you out. I don't know if that's the first time that uh, they shot so. a movie like that. Yeah. It, it just it was unlike anything I've ever seen before. Yeah, somebody walking around the woods mm-hmm. with a hand with a video camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it looked it looked like they were you know for real. Just immediate headache until yeah. he saw oh, them man. on stage the of like the point of view. what Golden Globes or something <laughs> whatever <laughs> whatever. Oh She's like, wait, I thought that oh, person wait. died in the movie. <laughs> they made it out, real, man. They're not demons. Oh god! Like my goodness, dude. <laughs> Sorry, I outed you, babe. <laughs> so that basically well, I mean, everybody outs me on this. That show. broadcast would have got you then. You oh, probably all hundred percent. You were like, dude, it's World War. Get, we're, we're done. I, hey, get the go bag. Yeah, we're bugging out to the mountains. Yeah. Oh yeah. But it did. Like seriously though, it changed. I mean, like I said, it was the beginning of psyops, dude. And ever since then, you can. The government does that all the time. Uses fear <clears throat> tactics. Too. Weren't you the one? That told yeah, me that I think there was the last one that was... saw that that video and then just straight were like, "We're leaving." Yeah, they were packing their homes. Pack your bags. Run. Yeah, I think they, were, run. they were loading their cattle into the Can back trailer. Can you imagine trailer. the pandemonium? <laughs> oh my oh, yeah. gosh. They were screaming, and uh, yeah, then they were like, okay, this is we, we've got society. We can add one little fake thing here and there. Yeah, I think the last one was everything. back like in 2020. Some kind of COVID thing. Some kind of COVID. Yeah. I don't remember. Mm-hmm. I would, Everybody I did, freaked out. I, oh, we should lock down? Oh, that sounds like a good idea. Like, oh my gosh, we're going to die. What do you know? <laughs> PSYOP got us. Not me, though. Oh my gosh, you don't have a mask on? We're dead. Yeah. <laughs> I'm breathing in plutonium. <laughs> oh, by the way, are you drinking something? Okay, mm-hmm. it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so the other side of this, from psyop to well, there alien. is a, there there is a scientist who worked at Area Fifty One, 
before he passed, he revealed some surprising secrets about aliens. Is this Robert Lazar? <clears throat> no, do you have some stuff on Lazar? Yeah, but I don't know if you want to do that one before. Or... Well, let's let's um let's get some let's Bobby. Go. Let's get let's get Mr. Bushman here. So <clears throat> this this guy, his name's Boyd Bushman. And he he firsthand said that there was technology that he worked on that like makes things float, anti gravity. So August seventh, twenty fourteen. Now Bushman is just not one of these guys, you know, that lives up in the Tennessee Hills playing a banjo. Yeah. This guy is an American senior aerospace engineer. Okay. Okay. He's smarter than me. He's smart. Okay. <clears throat> he worked for Lockheed Martin. So he passed away. But before he died, he made a remarkable video where he talked about Area 51. He mentioned advanced propulsion systems they were experimenting with there. He even had pictures that he showed that he had the actual alien bodies there. He actually showed photographs. Hmm. Okay? And they were they were exactly what you'd expect. The little little four foot gray gray people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Boyd Bushman, he worked at, as a senior research engineer for, listen to this, Lockheed Martin, <laughs> Texas Inter Instruments, Hughes Aircraft, which uh, that, was, uh, that was known for its involvement in developing the Stinger missile. So this guy is very smart. Yeah. Now, his fascination with UFOs and anti-gravity technology became evident in 1999 when he was featured on the Discovery Channel documentary. Or documentary. Documentary. Thank you, Rachel Perry. <laughs> I love it. Love um, you yeah. Down your words. Documentary. Yeah. What was the last one you said? I don't remember. You something. said something uh, about mutilated. Oh yeah. Mangulated. Mutation instead of Mut mutilation. Mutated. <laughs> yeah. So Discovery Channel documentary. Uh, I'm staying with that. Um, where it was, he was discussing secret aircraft uh, technology with Nick Cook. Now Nick is an author and a writer for Jane's Defense. Initial, I don't know who Jane's defense is, but it sounds important. Now, Bushman didn't reveal uh, much, but later on he opened, about, opened up about his keen interest in anti-gravity. Later, 2007, Bushman appeared in a lesser-known documentary, nailed it, mm -hmm. called From Here to Andromeda. Now, I need to go watch that. As soon as I, soon as I found out about this, I was like, I need to go watch that documentary. <clears throat> and the guy that did that was David Sarita. Now, in this documentary, Bushman delves further into his thoughts on UFOs and anti-gravity. So, in 2008, he also underwent a polygraph test where he confessed to working with anti-gravity technology at Area 51, being involved in alien technology, studying alien spacecraft, and even claiming to have made physical contact with an alien being. And he passed it. He yeah. Passed it. Passed, passed it. True, 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 true. He also mentioned his acquaintance with Bob Lazar. So him and Lazar knew each other. Lazar is a big whistleblower, mm -hmm. as Kayla is going to talk about in a few minutes. <clears throat> mm -hmm. He also shared UFO photos he had received. Um, he had received some of which depicted ships that were supposedly very close to uh, the photographer, but were hard to see. So he, sh he was showing some pictures that were blurry. Of course, of course they're always they, blurry. Yeah, they're always they blurry. So you can't, you know. He also showed a picture of a blurry light, which he claimed was what the crafts looked like when they powered up. So it was just like this big light. <clears throat> Next, he showcased a series of photographs featuring an alien being. The creature resembles, you know, one that you might imagine. Mm -hmm. Large head, <clears throat> large eyes. He had five fingers, five toes, and webbed feet. They're about five feet tall, so they're very short, which is not a bad thing. Isn't that taller than you? Uh, no. no, I'm 5'4 and a half. So, <laughs> so about I could size. be an alien. Um, some of them, and I don't know how you figure this out, but he said some of them were reported to be as 230 years old. I mean, did the aliens tell him that? What? How do you? Hey, guys, listen. I've been going around this galaxy for quite a while. Listen, I'm, I'm like 230 years old. This you know how long you live? Double it. Yeah. yeah. So Bushman said there was a there was at least eighteen of these beings that existed, and functioned in the facility he worked at at Area Fifty One. So function meaning helped them, like working around yeah. them. Yeah, hey. I'm working around. Hey, teach me how to do this anti gravity stuff, so we can do it here. 
so we can go over Skinwalker Ranch and make people nervous. Um, additionally, he believes that a team of specialists works around the clock to study alien technologies obtained through various means, a.k.a. tortured. Mm. I just uh, I don't know if that's true or not, but <clears throat> uh, Bushman proceeded to share the story of his friend who was shot down, who shot down an alien spacecraft and entered it. However, he emphasized that working with alien technology is often perilous for humans. Mm. Now, that's a story we've heard kind of that's well, a like common that's Roswell. a common thread. Yeah. yeah. According to Bushman, 39 individuals have lost their lives while attempting to reverse engineer UFOs with 19 fatalities. What the heck? Occurring, Where is the proof of that? <laughs> occurring during a technolo- technology test about a year and a half ago. So at the time, I don't know when this was written. 39. <clears throat> That's a lot of people this is to when not he have was, any proof. He was given this stuff. Um, though he was somewhat vague about the specifics, he mentioned uh, that they were attempted. They attempted to bring different flying crafts close to the UFO, which then defended itself, resulting in the deaths of 19 people from their team. Wow. Okay, so th- they're basically saying he tried to get close to it. Sounds UFO like defended itself are- and... <laughs> All right, so the entire situation could be easily dismissed as a fantastical tale of an elderly individual. However, one gives pause is Bushman's background. That would yeah, make you think. His background, he's just some not him nutty and guy. and Robert Lazar have a pretty big background. They were both very... Because why would a highly respected scientist start fabricating right. stuff that you is, know, outlandish that is the like this? <laughs> that's the question. All right, so that, that's the story of Boyd Bushman. Let us know in the comments if you're listening to this on YouTube our YouTube channel, just leave us comments. If you think this is uh, just some dude having fun or if he's for real or on the Spotify mobile app, make sure you comment and let me, you know, let me know what you think about Boyd Bushman. If he has any credibility with this story, can I, let me hop in on this real quick. Oh, you know, Boyd, Uh, Boyd Bushman, Bob Lazar. Okay. Okay. I know you got a lot of information. I I only have so much. Okay. But anyway, Bob Lazar, he's the kind of the one that started this whole, Alien whistleblower rigmarole. Okay, the story of Bob Lazar is this: he was there to. I can't remember what technology he was there because Bob Lazar obviously was a scientist as well, smart guy. Blah 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 blah. Yeah. And the story is this: they were bringing him through one of the corridors of Area Fifty One, and the guard was pushing him along. And the guard says, "Don't look. Don't look. Which would to make your you right. Look. Which is <laughs> and he did. Which would make anybody look." look. That's like, don't touch the red button. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't touch the red button. And then Bob Lazar looks, and what does he see? He sees a Martian. <laughs> right? Oh, my gosh, there's an alien in there. So Martian the, you're, or an so alien are both the same. Hey, listen, listen, hear me out. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Hear me out. <laughs> Wait, what, what is a Martian compared to an alien? Same thing. There's an alien. I think a Marvin, Marvin Martian. Yeah, it's Martian. just a little helmet, little helmet guy. <laughs> uh, he walks through. They tell him, Wait, don't wait, look. wait. Martians are from Mars. Yeah, right. Marvin Martian was That's true. Yeah, yeah, it's Martian. Martian yeah. Straight up. So you can't be a Martian. So How do right. you get an alien? Martian. We're getting caught in the weeds. Hang on one second. You're getting caught Hold in the weeds. You said Martian. <laughs> You're alien. being debunked, bro. <laughs> alien. It was an alien. It was okay. a little four foot tall alien. Thank you. Okay. Right. Same Great. thing. Same yeah, thing. Same all thing the, uh, Bushman saw. Yeah. Okay. He's got pictures. <laughs> He's got pictures. They got pictures of the little guys. But anyway, he looks. He freaks out. Then he starts telling people. So I think what I think theory is. Bob Lazar, they knew he was a man that couldn't be trusted. They knew he was a man that would go out and spill his beans. Because, I mean, listen, these these <laughs> CIA people, I mean, they're experts in reading people, dude. That's what they do. They write books on it. He's Most smart. of it's classified. This is, I don't this keep is that a in. classic Cold War tactic. This is a classic Cold War tactic. They give him a bait. They have him look over. They're like, "This guy's gonna spill it all." Well, yeah, because he's he's already interested in all these things. But like, then these get things this. Make... Yeah, get this. Then Bob Lazar, of course, <clears throat> like they knew, freaked out, went and told his family, told his wife, told his friend, "I know where these these aliens spacecrafts fly over." And he's like, he goes over there, he brings everyone, they sit on this hillside. <clears throat> and then just like he planned, the alien spacecraft flies over and freaks out. Then they find him, they try him, and they get him out of there. They kick him out of there. To me, absolutely 100%, that was <clears throat> a psyop. If that's Bob what Lazar. happened. That's what happened. 
I have got I've got different stuff. I guess you, a lot of got, different things, things happen. With what do you, you, what do you got on Bob over here? Give us Kayla. give us some Bobby Lazar info, man. Well, Area Fifty One mythology was started in 1989 by Bob Lazar or Robert Lazar. Did you guys know he was on the Ro- Joe Rogan podcast? I had no no idea that he was on that podcast. Did you listen mm. to? No, but I just <clears> we should have had him on the show. I was like searching yeah. the web and I saw. I was like, well, why didn't Susan? See if you can get Bob Lazar. That would See, be I would have told him. I would have told him he was tricked to his face, and then. It would and then see what happened. Out. Yeah, I'm like, dude, you saw nothing. He claimed that he worked on extraterrestrial, extraterrestrial Got it. Easy. technology inside the base. I don't think he just saw something. Right. Yes. He said he worked there. Like I was on top of doing things for this company. Yes. Right. But, First okay. engineering. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the deal. <clears throat> so CIA, everything is a need to know basis, right? <clears throat> Bob Lazar knew what he needed to know, mm-hmm. and nothing more. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that's down the line. That's how it was. Everyone is like, I'm working on this today. This is anti-gravity stuff. Okay. In their brain. Oh, it's alien technology. But realistically, Hitler already had it with the die Glock. It's technology that we already had. So in his brain, it's an alien. He's probably talking around, dude, we're working on alien spacecraft. The CIO overhears it. Let's give this guy a little cookie trail and have him implode on himself. I don't know. I don't feel like he was that stupid of a person. No, he's like freaking from, he yeah, got a, a what degree is from MIT. Okay. It doesn't matter how smart you are. You can be lied to and tricked. I don't know, man. Mm. It says as a teenager. He Intelligence and wisdom are two separate things, according to D&D lore. And it's true. <laughs> oh, wow. All right. Now we're taking it to D&D land. An insight check is different from an intelligence check. And he might have been intelligent, but he was not insightful. And he got tricked. That's mm. my That's theory. your theory. He was yeah. intelligently tricked. Yes. Okay. They That's used his brains against him. All right. Well, let's go over with the little All right, go ahead. things I won't that made talk him anymore. smart. It says, as a teenager, he built jet engines, jet engines and attached them to his bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> As Lazar wow. got older, his jet engines grew larger and were attached to his cars. One time he built a particle accelerator in his bedroom so he could produce chemicals for his homemade hydrogen powered Corvette. What? This sounds like wiki. A particle <laughs> no, man. accelerator? No, this, is, this is stuff that he's talked about. Dang. <clears throat> uh, he claims to have studied physics at MIT, although I guess that can be debunked. Uh, it has no records of Lazar ever being there. <laughs> there <laughs> we like go. No, there's See, they, no record. They tried to scrub so him. It is they, that's right. Tried to scrub him. Yeah, they scrub him. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, and he was arrested for abetting a prostitution ring. <laughs> Good Lord. What? <laughs> well, I mean, here's the deal. They would was he try trying to, to strap rockets on the prostitution. It says the charge was later reduced to felony pandering and says he has been raided by the FBI twice. Uh, he also claims to have been shot at and old videos show him shooting in the desert with his friends Uzi. I don't know who Uzi is. Is that a singer? Uzi's a gun. <laughs> that actually scared me in my ears. I was like, what the heck? Uzi is a weapon. Yeah. It could be a little millimeter. Uzi. <clears throat> it says little his Uzi. friend's Uzi. Oh, okay. Like little, his friend's is gun. Yeah. Okay, never mind. Uh, I was Boozy. like, was well, he out there with little Uzi? Tet. And he also hosted underground DIY fireworks festivals. Wow. This guy sounds. This like guy's all around. He's a buffoon, dude. I'm, I'm D- sticking with my theory. He, he, he says that he viewed autopsy photographs of aliens and that the U.S. government used Fifty One to examine recovered alien spacecraft, which we already heard from you. But yours was like man. he went in. He straight up saw a Martian man, and they yeah. just thought he was an idiot. Well, he's claimed to have seen lots of other things and worked there. So, well, I just wonder what the there. true story is. So and working there means what? I mean, yeah. So you think there. him and Bob Bushman, they were like just, hey, let's let's sigh off these guys. It's Boyd. I'm just saying. Oh yeah, I like calling people Bob. Yeah. It's Boyd. 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 Bushman. Boyd. Get it right. Bushman. Bushman. Man well, of the bush. <laughs> obviously it's up for debate, but honestly, <clears throat> when you think about it logically, and you think about um, the the way that we are lied to, especially in society nowadays, the you know the psyops that we go through and how easily people are tricked, and these are these are all shapes and sizes of people. It doesn't matter how smart you are, how many PhDs you have, like your your brain will believe you. Your brain can be tricked. You know, it's like it's all about the paradigm of how you receive information, and um, I mean we talk about that all the time on the show. And the Bob Lazar thought that he was working on alien technology, it would not take much to be able to trick him to think he was working on technology of aliens. 
So And they would use him because he was already outspoken about He was probably already outspoken. So what the CIA had a big reach of people that (laughs) believed him. Well, whenever you're trying to make uh to keep (laughs) something secret, like I said earlier, you there's two ways to do it. It's you, you take can, them down a different you rabbit can, hole. You can create path. a cover story or you can allow people to create their own and right. let them run with it. So I think the CIA absolutely did that with Bob Lazar um, to keep them off the trail of what was actually happening there. Um, because it is, it was a top secret um, facility, mm-hmm. you know, like, and, and the deal it is was this. getting too much. So, so the end game. Yeah. So the, the end game for is. The, for the CIA is to, to have some st- guy running around talking about aliens. The more we talk about aliens, the more secretive we can be with all the well, stuff that actually matters. Let's think is about let's think about the Manhattan Project, right? <clears throat> we know that happened. We created a nuclear bomb, the bomb. Okay. Okay. What was the Manhattan Project? That was the that was the Oppenheimer movie. We yeah. Just oh, oh okay. okay. So there was was that the H bomb? Sixty seventy thousand employees that worked at this thing, but it was the most secret project before Area Fifty One. Well, no yeah, one spoke. They all lived there. And yeah, they lived. Yeah, there. they lived. They they yeah got them in. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, the CIA already knew how to keep things secret. At this and point. there wasn't social media back then. Yeah, and there wasn't social media. But I think that's what happened. That's my theory. I, I I personally, like I said before, I don't believe in extraterrestrial, out of this world beings. <clears throat> I don't believe in little Martian people. Yeah, me neither. I believe that there is definitely different dimensions i believe in different dimensions and i definitely believe that well yeah Um, because that's you know we have that in our bible you know there's yeah we are multi-dimensional beings but the the information and the technology we have it all goes back to nephilim it goes back to the fallen angels that i believe that there is a race of people in hollow earth um maybe hitler scientists got this information from them maybe we are working with them at Area 51. That, to me, is more believable. I believe there's definitely advanced technology. Oh, there's yeah. There's a race of advanced oh, absolutely. technology And then testing there, it, people sure. people in their minds are yeah. thinking, oh, this is extraterrestrial. I mean, yeah. wasn't it a couple episodes that you mentioned, like, people that have done amazing bounds of technology, they've always said that they've gotten their information from another source, Some like sort a higher of entity. power entity. Yeah. yeah. Which we need to get that on the docket, but yeah. Yeah, um, Alan Turing credits the invention of the computer to a demon. Mm. Um, a bunch of them. The guy <clears> who created the uh, the idea of a simulation theory credits it to a demon or a spirit. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it just just follow the line down. So I don't know. Anyway, I'm done monologuing. Well, that's all I got. Well, Area 51. Here's the one thing we know: it's a real place in Nevada. <coughs> People work there. It's been on lots of things like Avengers and Will Smith movies. And it's very secretive. It's very secretive. Whether it be yeah. aliens. Whether it's aliens or not, you decide. Let us know in the comments. Oh, and it was a Facebook event prank to 2021. Oh, well, I heard about that. Yeah, yeah. 6,000 people at one time. Nothing happened, though? No. Nah. They're scared because they got no balls They're like, like let's Jerry go, Freeman. Let's go out there and <laughs> yeah, party can't get like right Mary, on the border. Yeah. Let's, let's get some of this plutonium up in us, boy. <laughs> hey, guys, make sure you visit a, visit us on our website, bottomofthat.com. Check out our blog, and you can uh, check out all the show notes and resource material that we use on the show. From there, you can also find us on all our social media platforms like Instagram, Facebook, and X. If you're listening on YouTube, BitChute, or Rumble, and you like this episode, do me a favor. Share, like, subscribe, and leave a comment so we can serve this material up to other people that want to hear it. If you're listening on any other platform that's just audio only, do me a favor, follow us and turn on notifications so you never miss when we publish an episode. If you did not like this episode, hey, I thank you for listening this long. Tune in next week when you might hear Joey say, Oh my gosh, you got nothing! <laughs> <laughs>